Hey guys, Edbud here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be looking at running shoe midsole foams. This will be a two part series guys. Today I'm going to be looking at the midsole foams used by Adidas, Nike, Reebok and Saucony. If your favourite isn't there guys, please do check back for episode 2 where I'll take a look at the midsole foams from Hoka, Brooks, Asics amongst others. So as 2021 gets off to a roaring start, I'm keen to see where running shoe companies take their different midsole foams over the next 12 months. So many foams, so little time. In fact, there's so little time you've got to wear two watches. First off, I want to look at each company's midsole foams to give you a bit of a description to try and unlock the secrets. Some people are a little confused as to what the properties are of each midsole foam. So, Adidas first. Some of the key ones to watch out for are Light Strike and Light Strike Pro. You'll see Light Strike in the SL20 series. It's also utilized in the current Boston 9 alongside Boost. Certainly a little firmer, a little less compressive, but very resilient. And most importantly, nice and light. Seems to be relatively durable right now. And Adidas also utilize it to provide some sort of cage and protection to other midsole foams. Light Strike Pro, obviously, in the Adidas Adi Zero Adios Pro. Is that right? Yeah. Very compressive, this one. Much more compressive than Light Strike. You could say squashy. Very resilient, though. Extremely light and malleable. Certainly very quick to return to its form, so there's some very good energy return there. I can't get over how much it feels like packing material though. We'll move on to Nike now. Obviously React is in a number of their shoes right now. They've got it in the Peg 37, the Myler, also in the React Legend 3 Shield. It's been really nice in this one. Of course, we've got a mixture of both React and Zoom X in the Tempo Next Percent here. So you've kind of got a best of both worlds type situation. That quite dense and durable React foam in the heel. Quite a lot less malleable, this stuff. Not even sure that this stuff here is the same as the stuff that's in the Legend React 3 Shield. Then, of course, in the other part of the shoe, you've got that very compressive Zoom X foam. Quite resilient, sadly less durable, it seems, over the miles, but very light and airy, like a mint aero chocolate bar. I would suggest there's a slightly more brittle feel to the Zoom X foam. I know it's P-Bax based, but it does feel different to other P-Bax based foams. Moving on to Reebok next. So within the Symmetros here, they've got their energy foam. I suggest it's a little less dense than React. There's some compression there to it, but a very stable ride. To me, it doesn't feel anywhere near as heavy as React as well. I think that's my own personal opinion though. I'm not entirely sure if that is correct. It just feels to me a lot lighter. This does appear to be a beaded based foam. So they've crushed loads of beads together, probably stuck it in an autoclave and changed it to the shape that they want. What I love about the energy foam is that it seems Reebok can produce the shoes very cheaply, great value. And it's a nice and resilient foam. In the lighter, faster shoes, you've got the float ride foam. This is a P-Bax based foam and a beaded one again. I'd suggest it's a little less compressive than Zoom X, but still nice and light. Perhaps even a little more durable than Zoom X with a little less energy return. But I love it. Float ride, top notch stuff. So I've lost my pair of Saucony Triumph 17s. I don't know where they are right now. They must be somewhere. So I can't hold them up to explain about Power Run Plus. That's the denser foam that they utilize within some of their daily shoes. I guess it's more similar to React from Nike or perhaps even Boost in terms of the feel. Again, it's made from beads. So these sort of pellets, they kind of crush together. It does look almost exactly like Boost from Adidas. Around about the same weight, I think, as React and Boost. Then, of course, we have the Power Run PB that's featured in the Endorphin Speed and the Pro. I'd suggest, again, this is a little denser than Zoom X. Closer to the float ride foam that we find in the Reebok shoes. Very, very durable, though, and very stable. I haven't had any sort of signs of degradation in any of my Power Run PB shoes. So that's pretty much all the midsole foams we're going to look at today. I will cover the other manufacturers in a second video. So let's look at Adidas first. Where are they going in 2021 with their running shoes? So clearly Light Strike and the Pro variant of Light Strike are at the forefront of the German shoe master's mind. I think big hits like the SL20 and the Adi Zero Adios Pro have shown some real potential to boost the performance of those runners. We're seeing incredible performances over those common distances. I think Light Strike first appeared in a basketball shoe. 
It was developed not to pack out at all or compress over time, but still be exceptionally light and responsive. That basketball shoe where Light Strike appeared was the next level. It uses the same foam as we find in the SL20, the Boston 9, and the Adi Zero Pro. There is very limited information though as to what Lightstrike Pro is actually constructed and made out of. It's clear that Adidas see this as their flagship foam for 2021 and I think everybody's looking forward to that soft, forgiving and compressive foam in the form of those new models. The Adi Zero X and the Adi Zero Adios Pro 2, both with gargantuan stacks in the heel and forefoot. So I've got to be honest, I'm not absolutely set on the light strike usage in the SL20.2 yet. Nike wise, it's a React and ZoomX smorgasbord. I think we'll continue to see React foam being used very generously in the daily models over 2021. I predict that we'll continue to see Nike utilizing Zoom AirPods in some of their other models later this year. I mean, they've mixed it up a lot with the Tempo Next Percent you got React, ZoomX, and those AirPods. I'm certain that they'll launch another version of this shoe and try to weight relieve it somewhat, perhaps with a more minimal upper. If Nike stay true to their typical behaviors, I believe that we'll just see an upper update to the Pegasus line this year. I reckon the Pegasus 38 will have pretty much the same midsole and outsole unit as we saw on the 37, but just with an improved upper. I wouldn't be surprised if they revert back to flywires actually, as we've seen in the React Infinity Run Flyknit 2. I don't think they'll change anything to that four foot air unit and the React midsole. I don't see them making any changes to the Vaporfly Next Percent midsole and outsole unit too. Those leaked images we've seen of the Next Percent 2 clearly show the exact same midsole and outsole unit as per the version that was released back in 2019. I can't see them making any massive changes to the Alphafly model either. I mean, they're releasing that Zoom X Invincible shoe with loads and loads of stack. People have always said that the performance gain from the Zoom X shoes is in the midsole foam. So I guess we'll find out soon if that is the case. Reebok next. So launching the Energy 3, we've already seen them reutilize the same foam with a slightly different midsole unit and any minimal changes there to the upper. Obviously they recently launched the Run Fast 3, which has the same midsole unit as the previous two iterations. Maybe we'll get an upper update to the Run Fast Pro this year. I can't see them making too many changes to the midsole there either. So the expanded polyurethane midsole here in the Symmetros, I don't see them making too many changes to that over the course of 2021. I think maybe that's down to the current situation with the sale of Reebok. Are oh, Adidas going to move it on to somebody else? Not an awful lot of solidity there in terms of the future of the company. Moving on to Saucony next. Over the course of 2020, we saw Saucony utilizing that Power Run PB material in the midsole of not only the Pro, but also the Saucony Endorphin Speed. I can see them upping the use of those PBAX based pellets and bringing us some shoes that are perhaps slightly lighter and some more daily offerings that utilize that foam. I think lots of people are waiting for that endorphin trail actually. Looks like we've got a full length power and PB midsole there, only a four mil drop, and it looks like it's gonna come in under 300 grams for that famous UK size eight and a half. And that's really not too bad at all for a trail shoe. I'm sure that Saucony will continue to offer Power Run Plus as well in some of their daily shoes. There's bound to be a further iteration of the Triumph series later in 2021. I think you can bet your bottom dollar as well that there'll be further updated versions of the Endorphin Pro and Speed. I would assume there'll be very few changes to any. Maybe perhaps something in the outsole. Okay, that's my look at four of the top manufacturers and some of the shoes they might put out over 2021. Let me know what your thoughts and opinions are down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. Released back in 1997, Songs for Northern Britain by Teenage Fan Club still is one of my favourites. A very fresh, poppy, indie sounding album. Initial track Start Again and Ain't That Enough are fantastic and kick off the album in the right kind of mood. Track 4 is one of my favourites, I Don't Want Control of You. It's just loads of beautiful harmonies, loads of great guitar parts. In fairness, there's not a bad track on the album and it's certainly one that I can recommend. It really is an album that makes you feel like the summer's just around the corner. Go and check it out, Songs from Northern Britain by Teenage Fan Club. Okay, thanks for sticking with me to the very end, people. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when those new videos are launched. And it really helps the channel out if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.